Okay guys, today I'm going to go through a topic that is extremely complex and I've got a lot of ideas rolling around in my mind. I tend to analyze everything I see, I guess you would say, and especially with all the experience that I have with black bears, I tend to overanalyze, I guess, a little bit. But the subject of what bears smell and how they communicate through smell has never really been explored to the point where I think it should be. And there's very little scientific um, studies, I guess, that have been done on this. But I'm going to share some opinions with you. And I expect it to generate a lot of discussion because I'm probably going to bring up some things that you've never thought of before and I might ruffle some feathers with uh, the, some of the things that I say that will kind of stomp on some long-held traditions with regard to baits and bear scents and the use of fryer oil and things like that. As I said this is really pretty complex so you might have to watch this video twice to get it all and I am hope I'm able to convey the things that are uh, kind of bunched up and stirred up in my mind in a manner that you can understand the concepts that I'm going to talk about. So this is just going to be a lot of talk and I apologize for that but I think the information that I'm about to give out will be worth uh, sitting down and listening to this and processing it and uh, hopefully you have some comments on it also. So I'm going to start out with a story that is very common in baiting bears. This particular instance happened in uh, 2024 but I can probably tell you there's been a dozen others in the 25 years or so that I've been baiting bears. So I found a spot, it's a new spot that I was going to put a bait and everything looked good on paper. There's a swamp, there's a ridge, there's, it's got everything that you want, it's got good access and I looked at this spot and I'm like this, this could be a really good bait site. And so I put a bait out on opening of the baiting season and uh, put a cell camera on it and then uh, I didn't check it for five days, it didn't have a bear on it because I had a cell camera so I knew that it wasn't getting hit and after five days I went ahead and took another gallon of fryer oil with gold rush in there that's that's the way I always started I put the bait out put the uh, fryer oil spray it in the trees and so forth and then so after five days I just went back and did it again and uh, the bait did not get hit on the sixth day or the seventh day and finally on the eighth day a yearling bear showed up at the bait during the night and then the next morning a sow with three cubs showed up on the bait and then the next night a mature bear was on the camera and before the next morning there was another bear on the camera so less than 48 hours that bait went from zero bears to seven bears like I said, this has happened before, and it makes you go, what in the world? How can that sit there for eight days and not get hit, and then all of a sudden the bears are just piling on it? That's an example of what I'm going to talk about today, of how bears find baits through communication with other bears, primarily by scent. Now, one of the most common things that people talk about is using fryer oil on the ground around the baits and some people use a lot of it I mean people sometimes just dump five gallon bucket of it out and uh, the uh, the theory has always been that hey the bear gets it on their feet and they track it around and other bears smell the oil and uh, will follow where the bear came from back to the bait okay and that is one component of an extremely complex system of how bears find the bait and I'm not saying that's not a true statement I'm just saying it's way way too simplistic number one and number two it's only one very small part 
of how the bears find the baits. We also use the sprays um, and you know spray the bushes. We use the good scents and things that the bears will get on their fur and track on their feet and so forth. And that's all a part of helping bears find the bait. But it just has to be way more complicated than that. And that's where I arrived at some of the conclusions that I'm talking about coming up in this video. And uh, you've heard me say before that I know that bears will smell each other's droppings and they'll find a pile of bear scat and they'll go, wow, that bear's eating better than I am. i got to figure out where that bear is eating. But how would they find where that bear is eating? So that's just another small component to it. So let's talk about what really triggered this video and the things that I'm going to really dive deep into here. Um, I had a conversation with Juliet Flint who is uh, one of the premier tracking dog experts in Minnesota. Tracks a lot of deer and a lot of bear and uh, we call these dogs blood tracking dogs and I always kind of thought it was more than that but I, I had a conversation with Juliet a couple of years ago and she mentioned a couple things and she said that she said the dogs aren't just tracking blood in fact blood is a small part of the package that they're following and that when they track deer they're tracking the interdigital glands between the hooves of the deer and when they're tracking bears they're using other information including just drops of blood, some of which are too small for humans to even, even see. I, I called her up again later and had a more in-depth conversation about that. And she said some things that I've been suspecting about bears. Bears finding baits through other bears is a really, really deep, complex thing. Let's look at it this way. Bears are hyper aware of their surroundings way more than humans could ever even consider because of their vision their hearing and especially their sense of smell their sense of smell is so far out there that we can't even really have a concept of what it's like and they're constantly communicating with other bears and they're aware of all of the other bears that they come across and what they're doing and what they're eating and where they're traveling and why and they are just super hyper aware and communicating in so many different ways most of it which is unintentional you have intentional communication like bears that walk down small trees you've probably seen this where um, you know bears will just walk right over small trees or saplings and push them down and then they snap back up after the bear walks over them also bears uh, rub their sides on trees they have rubbing trees where they rub their backs on the trees these are all intentional forms of communication, but most of the communication, I'd say the vast majority of the communication is unintentional. And by that I mean there's like, here's a bear walking along, and all of a sudden he smells a bear that's 100 yards upwind of him, and he says, okay, that's so-and-so, and he's been in the blueberries. So he recognizes that bear by his scent, he knows where he is, probably has an idea of where he's going, and they're just hyper aware of all of the bear activity around them by, through this intentional and unintentional communication. So having that oil on the bear's paws and having the Northwoods bear spray or whatever on their fur and having the good food and the droppings, those are all a small part of how these bears are finding the baits and communicating with each other what they're eating and this is super highly developed over eons of survival of how these bears know how to find the best food sources to put on the fat that will get them through the winter so I'm also convinced that when the bears smell each other they can gather a lot more information just by smelling the bear than they would by smelling a little bit of oil on the ground. And I really believe that the bears give off a different scent when they're healthy versus when they're stressed. And this goes back to some of the things that Juliet told me that she believes that bears, that she's tracking with the dog, there's adrenaline, these bears are wounded, they're giving off a 
different scent through pheromones, through dander, through saliva, through urine, through um, you know just maybe glandular secretions that we don't really fully understand. The dog is tracking a bear that he knows this bear is wounded based on the way the bear smells because of the olfactory cues that the bear is giving off. So in a year when food sources are poor like they were last year, the natural food sources were down last year, the bears are super aware of where other bears are eating and they can find a bait in a hurry because they might be across a swamp but they smell this other bear and it's like, wow, you know, he's way healthier than I am. I got to figure out where he's eating and they'll go search it out because they're hungry. You have the issue of the, the things that we all think about like their tracks and their scat and stuff like that but dander as as in dandruff and glandular secretions and the probably the secretions that are in their hair and fur so that another bear smells them and this bear is giving off olfactory cues that he's really healthy and he's eating well and he's putting on fat and another bear is sitting there thinking oh, I'm not you know that guy's he's just a way better off than I am right now I, I gotta figure out where he's getting the food. So I think those are all part of a huge package that like I said this I call it hyper awareness for lack of a better word that these bears are taking in this information and it's all these things that are adding up and they're taking in huge amounts of information you can't really fathom what it's like for uh, a bear to be able to gather the information that he can from long distances, from short distances, from other animals and from other bears. And before I leave you I want to give you one more anecdote or example I guess and I've, I've given this in a video before but it bears repeating because it helps you understand how strong, how perceptive, um, powerful I guess is the word a bear's olfactory ability is and they have far more olfactory receptors even than a bloodhound. So, so this story gives you an example of what we're dealing with when it comes to the power of a bear's nose. Years ago I was watching this cop show on TV and here there had been this girl had been abducted from a swimming pool in an apartment complex. And so they brought this bloodhound in and they had the bloodhound sniff some of the girl's clothes and the bloodhound just took off and he just went down the road he went out on the on the road so he's obviously following the car that this girl was in and he went down the street a little farther and turned off and then he went up onto an entrance ramp onto the freeway and he's trotting down the side of the freeway and then he there comes to an exit and he goes past it and he goes another half a mile or whatever and he comes to an exit and he goes past it and so the the handlers that are using this dog are like, well, you know, we don't need to run this whole stretch between the exits. Let's just take him to the next exit. They took him to the next exit. He dro they dropped him off. He ran past that exit. They put him back in the car. They took him to the next exit, dropped him off. He went up the off-ramp and down a road. He turned off on a gravel road and for a little ways and then he turned off into this old farm place with an abandoned farm building and that's where they found the girl's body. So he was actually following olfactory cues that were coming from a car going down the interstate and it could have been skin cells that were sloughing off, maybe they had the window open on a car, the dog could gather up enough package of information of this girl's smell probably along with whoever was with her at that time and he was able to track all the way through those crazy obstacles and to find a girl's body. And a bear's nose is even better than a bloodhound's. You can just imagine the amount of information that they're taking in with every step of their day. So I've become convinced that the bears are communicating with each other intentionally and unintentionally through these pheromones, through the dander, through saliva and urine and their droppings and their tracks and they're communicating lots of information that we never really thought about as far as where they're eating and what they're eating and how healthy they are 
and if they're injured or wounded they're giving off different scents and maybe the scent of uh, adrenaline pulsing through their veins is another big issue and I haven't even begun to talk about how males and females communicate during the rut I suppose that's uh, that's a good topic for another video but anyway like I said uh, uh, this will probably generate a lot of discussion uh, if you have questions or anecdotes that would refute or add to what I've talked about uh, appreciate the discussion like I said I'm really just thinking out loud here and hopefully this has been helpful to you and we'll see you in the next video